All right, what is up, y'all? And welcome back to another video here on the channel. And man, today we're going to be talking about a pretty funny story that broke. A lot of people were shocked by this, particularly the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, we're pretty uh, torn up about this whole incident. So we're going to be talking about Mark Bryan. So he's a fashion model designer. Uh, he's he's the guy that's most known for wearing skirts and heels. And uh, his comments in a recent interview, they, they really shook up this community a little bit. Some of them are a little fired up. And uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. But let's go ahead and hop into that story. But before we do... I want to give a quick shout out to a friend of mine. Her name is Brooke. She's an absolute sweetheart. Uh, she asked to be shouted out in one of my YouTube videos. So I just want to let you guys know, let her know that she's an absolute sweetheart. She's a beautiful human being inside and out. And uh, she can always bring a smile to my face. So if you're watching this, Brooke, I appreciate you. Love you, bestie. But to the story. So the article starts by saying Mark Bryan does not want to be associated with the LGBTQIA plus community in any way. The influencer who has for years built his profile off of wearing dresses, skirts, and heels wants people to know he is a cis, straight male who is not fighting for your rights. Despite the fact that his queer following has helped him earn notoriety and land him lucrative fashion brand deals, Brian says gay people have actually made it harder for him. So some of the things that he will go on to say in this article... I actually do stand with him and I don't think he's in the wrong for saying this, despite the fact that a lot of people are getting upset with his, you know, opinion, you know, God forbid you have an opinion in the year 2022, but this specifically, I actually want to address first because this is kind of where I'm not too sure. So I, I think it's super funny how, you know, the transgender community, the queer community, they've kind of helped him according to this article. Anyway, I'm not familiar with the guy, so I can't really confirm or deny but it sounds like they've had some sort of role in landing him like lucrative brand deals and stuff and kind of get his name out there because even something like modeling and fashion design and stuff like that, it's obviously a business at the end of the day, right? And one of the biggest things you can do for yourself in promoting your brand is obviously, you know, gaining followers, gaining, uh, gaining connections with people really kind of helps catalyze the whole process of getting your name out there, right? And so I guess they've played a role in that. And then he's saying that they've actually made it harder for him, which I think is just so funny. I mean, like, talk about, you know, friendly fire will not be tolerated, right? Like, bro, straight up switch teams mid-interview. And <laughs> I can't help but uh, crack a smile at that. I think that's honestly so funny. Like, I feel like in many ways, maybe they have made it hard for him. But as far as getting his name out there, I would probably have to disagree on that one. But uh, pop off, King. The article continues by saying in a new clip from the German documentary style series Beyond Fashion, the 62-year-old Texan grandfather is interviewed by Queer Eye, Germany cast member and beauty guru Avi Jacobs, who is visibly shocked when Brian says, I try to separate myself from the LGB community because of the gay community that wore skirts and high heels before I did. I feel like actually they made it worse for me being straight now, be uh, straight because now I'm assumed to be gay. So this is particularly a big point that I disagree with. So essentially, he's saying that it is the LGBTQ community's fault that he's assumed to be gay. And I got to disagree, man. You know, it, it, are you sure it's not maybe the fact that you're going around wearing skirts, dresses, heels, you know, fashion items that are primarily worn by women in society? I mean, like, I, I'm just so sick and tired of hearing stories like this where other people make conscious decisions, you know, using their own free will. And then when the repercussions come their way or when the hate comes their way, it's always someone else's fault. You know, people are never able to take, I guess, accountability for their own actions. And it's always just a matter of, you know, pointing the finger at someone else. It's always someone else's fault. And am I saying that this guy deserves hate for that? Absolutely not. That's, that's not the point I'm trying to make. You know, I'm not going to sit here, you know, on YouTube with my small following. You know, I don't really have any sort of influence. But nevertheless, I'm not going to sit here and tell people what they can and can't do. In fact, I'm actually an advocate for, you know, live your life and do whatever makes you happy. And it sounds like this is something that has really given his life purpose, direction, and, all, and overall makes him happy, right? And so I would say, in my opinion, you know, keep doing what you want to do. You know, keep doing what you're doing. Sounds like you've got a good gig for yourself. I'm definitely not saying that he deserves any sort of hate, but at the same time, I'm saying that when hate does come your way, 
as a result of choices you've made in your life, you cannot be pointing the finger at someone else. That's actually super annoying. And I, I, I think that's very silly. I kind of think he's a clown for saying this, to be honest. The article concludes, though, by saying when Jacobs tells Brian she was excited to meet him because she assumed he was fighting alongside the queer community, he responded simply, I don't really think I'm fighting with you, but I'm not fighting against you either. Brian also double downs on his, uh, doubles down on his comments, adding that the gay and trans community is at fault for their perception. I think they've made it difficult for themselves just being more flamboyant. I think they're, uh, they're too outrageous and too flamboyant. So this is the part of the situation where I actually stand with Mark Bryan and I actually agree with what he's saying. So if if you think about like the LGBTQ community, they kind of like, they're they're pretty broad if you think about it, right? Like there's a lot of, you know, subcategorizations of people that fit that kind of mold, fit that group. And Mark Bryan is, I guess, technically like he falls within that group in a way. And he doesn't feel that he really should or he doesn't really want to. But people automatically just kind of bunch him in with that group. And he doesn't like that. And that's totally understandable. I mean, honestly, having your sexuality forced upon you, you know, other people trying to tell you who you are and aren't is very annoying. And I can understand his frustration, too, because that that topic can be really heated, you know, like LGBTQ rights and stuff like that. It can get really complicated, really heated, very overwhelming uh, emotionally, right? And so I could totally understand why Mr. Brian wouldn't want to be like grouped in that subcategorization of people and that he just kind of want to keep his distance. It must be really frustrating or so annoying just to be assumed that you're like, Uh, you know, an activist and a freedom fighter for the LGBTQ community and that you always have to be, you know, looking out for these people's best interests. And it's like, bro's just trying to live his life, do his thing, you know, focus on himself. That's totally understandable. And people are kind of trying to force their views of sexuality on him. And that's just very, it must be just very frustrating. It must be a lot to deal with. And it must be very annoying to have these high expectations, have this high uh, spotlight on him all the time. And I can definitely understand him, you know, wanting to kind of take a step back for sure. But what's also very interesting about this and it's something I also agree with is the fact that he said they bring a lot of the uh, the hate and negative attention on themselves by being too flamboyant. And I actually totally agree with that, too. And I'm sure I'll probably you know, receive a little bit of hate for saying that, but I really think it is, but I want you to hear me out here. There is nothing wrong with being yourself. Like if that's genuinely who you are, I, again, I want you to be who you are, but I think some people kind of like, you, you know what they say, like one bad apple can spoil the bunch, right? There's some people in that community. I feel that are very over the top flamboyant and purposely try to put on this facade that like they're, you know, they're gay, right? Or they're trans or they're queer, whatever you want to call yourself, just for the mere purpose of maybe attention, positive clicks on social media, you know, maybe fit in with the trend a little bit and kind of ruins it for the rest of the people that are just genuinely trying to be themselves. Like some people go way over the top with it. And I just honestly think that it really boils down to this, you know, be who you are, you know, express yourself in a way that makes you feel comfortable, makes you feel happy. But at the same time, don't make it your entire personality because that's that's kind of where, you know, the hate comes from, I think, is when people make it their whole entire personality and, again, try to force their views on other people, kind of like how Mark Bryan is saying. I think just live your life, focus on you, do what makes you happy. Don't force your views on other people because you wouldn't want me forcing my views on you, right? It goes, It's a two-way street, I feel. But uh, yeah, that's just some of my thoughts, guys. That's basically it for the video. I appreciate y'all watching. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like rating, subscribe to the channel for more commentaries just like this. Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what y'all have to say about this. I will, of course, respond to those comments. And uh, yeah, this is Runter, guys, and we will catch you on the next one. Later.